everybody. How are you? You know, as we look around the canyon today, it probably looks about the same as it did hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago. And during that time, there's always been people here. The first Americans that we call the indigenous or native peoples have been here for many thousands of years. So the Native Americans who lived here had to figure out how they could survive without having the stuff that we have today. No Costco's, no internet, not even grocery stores. And yet, they were able to not only survive, but to thrive. How did they do this? The Native Americans, who from the Los Angeles area we call the Tongva, really needed a few different things that were essential. Now we've got so many different kinds of things today, but what's really necessary? First of all, it would be the things that we need to sustain our body, food and water. And secondly, what we have to have in order to be able to sleep and be protected from wild animals and other dangers that might lurk around us. So how could they do this? Imagine yourself being thrust into a wilderness like this and having to figure that out. So the Tongva had to pretty much either find or make everything they needed. So let's talk about water. Now that was actually one of the easiest things for them to have. There was a lot more fresh, clean water throughout greater Los Angeles in the past than there is today. Lakes, streams, rivers, and on the other hand, there were a lot fewer people who needed them. So getting water was really a snap, was actually really an easy thing for the convicts. Food, on the other hand, was a bit more difficult. The Tongva liked to eat both plants and animals, meats, just like most of us today. So what do we call that? We call those people omnivores. So for plants, they had to find everything that was edible. And how do you think you would do this? At first, you don't really know which plants are okay to eat, which plants taste good, or which ones are very unsafe. So when the first people learned how to do this, learned which ones were actually good, then they taught their children, and they would teach their children, so that it got passed down from generation to generation. And actually, many of the plant foods that they ate long ago are ones that are still with us today that we also eat. Cherries, berries, nuts, and mushrooms, and lettuce were all very common plant foods for the Tongva. But there's one food that was their favorite that I don't think any of you have probably ever tried. And that was foods that were made from acorns. Acorns, of course, come from the oak trees, and the Tongva used these acorns to make both uh, warm cereals for breakfast, as well as small pancakes that they just loved. And so it wasn't unusual, in fact, it was normal for one family to collect and store up maybe close to 500 pounds of acorns to last them throughout the year. Now, on the other hand, meat could be a lot harder, a lot more difficult for them to get a hold of. So you have to remember that back in the days when they were here, there were no, there were no domestic, no tamed animals like cows and pigs, the ones that we commonly eat today. So instead, the only way that the Tongva were able to get meat was to become excellent hunters and fishermen. They made spears and nets in order to catch fish, and they used bows and arrows, 
and a small stick that they called a rabbit stick. It was actually kind of like a boomerang uh, in order to catch land animals. What did they eat? Well, they ate everything from squirrels and rabbits to deer and elk and coyotes and mountain lions, whatever they could find. So, they were able to get the necessities of food and water that they needed in order to survive. So what was next? Shelter and protection. How did the Native Americans accomplish this? They learned how to make their homes from the trunks of willow trees, which are very flexible and bendable. And they would put these in a circle together, bend them together into a dome shape, and then add on stiff layers of stiff grass and tules in order to make a large home. The homes were larger than just for one family. They actually housed three and four families in a single home. They called their houses Keech. So with all the basic necessities that people need in order to live, food and water, housing, protection, they had what they absolutely needed, what was essential. But you know, something was missing, and that was something that just like us, the Tongva also figured out a way to do, and that was how to enjoy themselves and how to have fun. They did things like storytelling, arts and crafts, and one of the favorites was making music. The Tongva pretty well made all their music using just four instruments. They did not use drums, so rather than that, they had something called a clapper stick, which is a stick that you hit against the palm of your hand. It kind of sounds like this. They also used an instrument that was called a shaker. The shaker was a gourd which means that it was made out of a cloth that had been cleaned out, dried in the sun, and then they would put something inside to make sound. It might be seeds, it might be little rocks or stones. The third instrument that they used were flutes. And again, they couldn't go to the store and buy these, so they would make them there was a particular tree that they made most of these instruments out of. It's called the elderberry tree, the tree of music that they called it. Fourth, the final instrument, is an instrument that you all have with you right now, and that is your voice, the music of singing. Let's take a listen to what we think their music might have sounded like. So as you go on with the rest of your day, please try to remember that where you live right now has probably been a home to indigenous Americans for thousands of years. And really, they weren't much different than you or I. They lived, they worked, and they enjoyed their days. So you have a great day and take care.